iRegent family. The last time that I came to you live, I was in an airport and I shared with you on fear and just stepping out in faith. And man, was that a raw moment for me because I had just stepped out in faith and left my whole life in Kona, working with YWAM for the last three years and stepped into a new season of coming to where I am presently, Redding, California. So I'm excited to share with you. Um, Lanny asked me to just update you on where I'm at and what I am doing next. I am in Redding, California to do second year at Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. A lot of you don't know this, but I did first year when I was 18, back in 2010, 2011, and the Lord used it to radically change my life. And it's been incredible to see the fruit that's come in my life ever since. Um, at this point, I have moved to Reading. Um, I'm really excited to register for second year on the 5th and to begin classes on the 6th. I'm just going to share with you real quick, like the bullet point version of how Jesus spoke to me to come here and how he brought me here. Um, if you want the full story, I did about an hour and a half long um, just sharing my testimony, uh, Facebook Live video, sharing about Nepal, how I got there, and how the Lord ultimately called me to Bethel with all the juicy details and crazy supernatural twists and turns. But when I left first year, I really had the distinct feeling that I wasn't done there. I didn't think that I was coming back to do second year. Um, I thought maybe I'd work with the church eventually or something along those lines, but God has a crazy sense of timing, and um, yeah, it's really beautiful and perfect that I'm back in this season. The Lord spoke it right before I went to Nepal, and I was like, Lord, is this you? I don't know. I'm not just going to pick up my whole life and move if this isn't you, God, but if it is you, you have my yes. And so I asked the Lord for confirmation. I got that confirmation that week, just a few days later, and I was like, oh gosh, Jesus, I just really need to know that this is you double fleece moment. <laughs> um, and then I decided to step out in faith, and I was like, you know what? God is a good father, and I feel like he's given me the confirmation that I've asked for, and if it isn't him, he's just going to close the door. He's not a negligent father who's going to let me just walk off a cliff because I wasn't listening well enough. My heart's in obedience. And so I started filling out the application, and this is where it gets wild. I filled out the questionnaire portion, sent out my references. One of them got it back to me that night, and the next one got it back to me within two days. Um, after that, I had to pay an application fee, and as many of you know, if you followed my Facebook Live videos while I was fundraising for Nepal, I had no money. So I was like, Lord, I don't know what to do. They waived the application fee for no reason, and it was just miraculous. So I was like, all right, Lord, I feel like you're just kicking the doors open for me in really practical ways. So he waived the application fee. So my references got back to me, he waived the application fee, and then it took me to the schedule my interview page. And they said that all the interview scheduling times were full. I was about to leave for Nepal, so I'm like, great, I'm not gonna have any Wi-Fi, what the heck am I supposed to do? And I was like, Lord, if you want me to do this, I just need you to make it happen. So literally, they emailed me, I woke up to an email the next morning saying, we have scheduled your interview. Now I wanna remind you that they said for the students to check back and schedule their own interviews when more times were available. But for some reason, Jesus, um, Bethel just took it upon themselves to schedule my interview literally the morning before I left for Nepal. So I literally <laughs> got interviewed for second year the morning before I left for Nepal. There is way more to the story, but in synopsis, the girl told me that there wasn't any reason she saw why I shouldn't be accepted, but that it would take a few weeks for me to find out. And I was like, that is totally fine. I'll be in Nepal for a few weeks. I won't even have access to Wi-Fi. And then two hours later, I received an, an email from Bethel saying, congratulations, you've been accepted to second year. Since that time, it has just been wild. The Lord has kicked doors open. I still needed um, a $450 deposit a week after I got back from Nepal, and someone randomly donated $500 towards whatever I was doing next. And I called them and said, this is an exact answer to prayer. And they were like, yeah, I was praying for you and I felt like the Lord was saying some things. So I shared with them what that money went towards to hold my place in second year. And they were like, that's incredible because while you were in Nepal, I was praying for you. And I felt like the Lord said that I wasn't supposed to stay with YWAM anymore, but that I was supposed to leave and do something else that would further my education towards what he had called me to next in my life. There are just so many crazy details about this story and I wish I could share them all now. I've already taken up too much time as it is. Um, my practical needs at the moment are that I still need about um, $4,000 for tuition altogether, and I also need a vehicle. I live about eight miles from campus, and those are just really practical needs um, to make this season work and to work well. The Lord keeps kicking open doors, and I'm so excited to see the way that he provides. Um, by registration day, I need $2,000 more than I presently have, and so Lanny asked me to share my needs, and those are them. I love you guys so much. I'm excited to see how the Lord uses this testimony in your life, and I'm excited to see the way that he keeps writing mine. I love you so much, and I'll see you soon.